Hello guys. In the last course, we have learned how iPhone X boot circuit works. Today we will learn iPhone X boot circuit diagnosis and maintenance. First, let's take a look at the iPhone X motherboard. As we know, iPhone X motherboard with two layers. The upper layer and the lower layer, they are bonding together. And uh, to tell the difference between the upper layer and the lower layer, we will call the upper layer as a logic board. And we will call the lower layer as a signal board in the future courses. iPhone X current is more than 200 milliamperes once triggered to boot. Okay, this case is a little different. This is not when connected with DC power. This is connected with DC power. Then you press power button or use tweezer to trigger start up the phone. And the current is just a jump from a relatively high value. Okay. And here is the curve for your reference. This is the iPhone X boot current curve for your reference. You can see. Normally, the current for the boot process is goes like this. It starts from around 50 milliamperes, but in this case, it's more than 200. So obviously, there's something wrong with this boot process. In this situation, let's see how to do the troubleshooting. First, separate the motherboard and then check the logic board only to see if there is any current leakage. Okay, if there is current leakage, then we check the logic board using the worsening inspection method to locate the abnormal areas. And the different situations. The situation one is the PMU get heated. Okay, let's go back to block diagram to have a look first. Okay, remember this block diagram. For the boot process, PMU should work first then output some powers. Output 15 set of power and 3 set of powers to CPU and the NAND flash chip. Okay? So uh, in this case, we find PMU heat. Then the problems it might come from the outputted power lines with some short or maybe the PMU itself inside some circuit gets shorted. So first, let's check the PMU outputted 17 sets of voltage related circuit by measuring diode values on the relay components. Okay. For example, this is a power outputted from PMU. There's 15 sets power output from PMU to CPU. We can check each power rail by measuring the diode values on the relevant components on the rail. For example, for the PP CPU P core, we can measure whether this power rail is good or not by check the diode values on this capacitor C2701. Okay. For other circuits, same we can random pick one component related with this rail and check the data values. Okay. So if you find the data values normal, for example here, we measure all the 15 and the three sets of power, power rail data values. They are normal. Then it means the output parts, okay, no problem. Then the problem should be from the PMU. Okay, so if they are normal, PMU problem maybe poor soldering or get damaged. So we should rebore the PMU or replace PMU with a new one. Okay, and go back to here. If we measure the outputted power rails, the data values is abnormal. Then we're gonna track the abnormal rail, find out and replace the relevant abnormal components or chip. Okay. Let's come back to here. Situation two is 
other chips get heated. For example, the USB IC, backlight IC, display IC, if they get damaged, can also cause the boot current start from maybe over 200 or even higher. So you're gonna feel which IC is heat. And then check the relevant circuit and uh, repair by replace chip or replace components. Okay. Another situation from the very beginning, we separate the motherboard and check the logic board only to see if there is any current leakage. If there's no current leakage, then what does that mean? There's no current leakage on logic board. Then it means the current leakage actually is come from the signal board. Okay, this signal board. So we should apply some browsing on the signal board. On the signal board. Then combine the signal board with logic board and put them into the circuit, the I circuit, the fixture. Then apply power around 20 seconds. After that, take out the logic board and the signal board and check if there's any components, the surface version get melted. If you find any components with version get melted, this should be the problem. Then you're gonna get this chip or components replaced. Okay. So this is a troubleshooting process for this case. And also we have some tips. First, the Qualcomm board, only the logic board is required to start up. No need to separate the motherboard. For the Intel board, both logic board and signal board are required to start up. So we should use ROSIN inspection method to check the logic board first. If the logic board with no problem, then we can do the separate and check the signal board. This can sometimes can save our time because uh, not all repair need to separate the two layers of the motherboard. Okay. And one more tip. For iPhone X repair, the fixture, for example, the eye circuit is required for efficient test process. In order to explain to you more intuitively, we take this damaged board as an example to show the detailed troubleshooting process. First, run cosmetic inspection of the motherboard. The motherboard is not deformed or water damaged. Then connect the motherboard with DC power supply. We can see there's no current leakage. Judging by this, the three main power supply rails, PPBATTVCC, PPVDD main, and PPVDD boost are in normal condition. Then get the motherboard booted up with tweezers. The boot current is larger than normal value. The fault is probably related to the 17 power supply rails, which output from PMU. Now we need to separate the motherboard to confirm whether the fault is related to the upper layer or the lower layer. Connect the battery connector on the upper layer with DC power supply. Then get the upper layer booted up with tweezer. The boot current is still larger than normal value. So our next step is to check the 17 rails output from PMU one by one. Let's start with PPCPU P core first. Locate C2701, one of the test points of PPCPU P core on the bitmap. Then run diode mode measurement of this capacitor. The med value is normal. So continue to measure the test point of the remaining 16 rails. Judging by the measured value, PP3 volt NAND has shorted. So we can locate the fault components with version detection method. Set the output voltage of DC power supply at 3 volt. Then get black pin to ground and the red pin to the test point. We can see some rosin on the surface of these components melted. And this one is C2649. Judging by this, 
C2649 has been damaged. Remove the black glue on the surface first. Then, we can just take it off with tweezer slightly. After that, measure the dyed value again. This time, we can see the dyed value is normal. Then connect the battery connector with upper layer with DC power supply and get the upper layer booted up with tweezer. Let's see the boot current. So this time, this boot current is in normal condition. Next thing we need to do is to solder the two layers together. Put the two layers on the heating platform to solder them together. After that, get the display assembly installed. Then get the battery connected with DC power supply. Get it booted with tracer to see the boot current. The boot current is normal. And let's see, the phone comes with normal display also and can access to the system for the cleared. So iPhone X won't turn on with large boot current issue fixed perfectly. More well, iPhone X troubleshooting courses will be launched in this week. You can visit Rewa Academy website, academy.rewa.tech, to learn more. And I hope Rewa repair course could be helpful to improve your repair skill and knowledge. See you next course. Bye.